Okay. I hope so. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, yay! What, what? Hey, got us your recall. Thanks for subscribing. Uh, it's like the first... Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I... Yeah, thank you. Hey, got us your recall. Hello, head for Stonely. What's up? Wabi? Hey, girl. Um, I'm... Yeah. It's been a busy freaking day. Oh my god, my cat. Oh my god, what are you doing? Okay. He's okay. He's just tearing up a cardboard fish. He's right there in the corner over there. Can you see him? He's a little, he's a, he's a big happy cat. Please don't do anything stupid. Anyway, he's, yeah. I see a cat. That's all I'm interested in now, Gunner Zero Recall says. I know. Look, he's just scratching that shit up. I'm real sorry. It, um, do you, is it okay? You guys okay? Oh, you know what? Hold up. Hold up. Let me do something. <laughs> okay. I want, I turned on these lights because they're pumpkin lights. Yes, they are in the shape of pumpkins. Hold on. I'm going to just sort of tip this so you see. My space is decorated with Halloween things. Oh, yes. And um, don't worry. I'm sure the cat will. Cat, I don't know where he went now. Ah, shit. Anyway, um, I don't know if you know this, but I'm a huge, huge fan of Halloween. Um, huge. And, uh, and I decorate my house every year. And when I was a kid, <laughs> Gunner Zero Recall says, The cat is gone! No! Um, sorry, he'll be back. Don't worry, he'll be back. You know why? Because he always comes back. Because he's a, he's a loyal cat. I think. Um, so, <laughs> anyway, um, Halloween. I'm a crazy person. And, um, I decorate the house. I'm a, when I was a kid, I used to, um, I remember, like, making, like, fake graves to put on my, my parents' lawn. Because that's the kind of little girl I was. Sort of morbid and interested in horror. And, um, yeah, I was a, yeah. So, um, okay, fun Halloween story. Okay, so one year, one year, we were like, hey, why don't one of, what we should really try to scare the kids. I mean, like, really try to scare the other kids. I mean, let's just make them piss their pants or something, okay? And it's like, yeah, let's do it. So it's, I have basically, I have two older sisters. And this is when we were all like somewhat young. And um, my, so my middle sister volunteered to like sit outside and pretend that she was um, like, that she was a doll. Okay. And my mom made like a grim reaper, like hooded cloak thing. And so my sister just sat outside. I was just really still. And, um... <laughs> Then at some point when the kids came to the door for trick-or-treating, she starts screaming and I would start screaming through like a side window and we would just scream <laughs> and uh, we scared the shit out of people. And I always played the scary Halloween tape. And I mean, it was a tape because shit, it was a scary Halloween cassette tape. Yeah. So we used to do the whole thing, the whole production and uh i love that shit and i'm here for it and i'm not going to do that this year to the children uh who might come to our door because i don't i don't have any room to make gravestones like there's nowhere to put the gravestones but i will give out candy I, yeah <laughs> a rave of emotion says screaming at strangers classy oh my god it's like you don't even know me <laughs> i scream at strangers all the time. No, not really, really. No, only like when I'm drunk in a bar. Only when I was super drunk. Or just like a little drunk. It's like, but I was pretending I was drunker than I was just so I could like have an excuse to yell at people. And yeah. Anyway, how are you guys doing? <laughs> Gunner Zero Recall says, the classiest. Oh my God. Yeah, I am the classiest. Look, at I'm wearing like kitty cat dress. I'm, I'm bringing the full cat today. You get the full cat. Which is nice. Um, classy. I'm a classy lassie. No, I don't know if I am. God. I probably curse too much to count. 
That's classy. Kitty meow meow, Gunner's ear recall says meow meow. I'm oh, sorry, I really love cats. Can you not tell? Like, look at my the background. If you look really closely, you can spot at least, like, you know, three cat posters. I have... There will be a... Mr. Pickles will come back in. There's, like, a little Ikea doll bed in the corner. That's his bed. Because that's how much of a crazy cat lady I am. I was like, you know, it'd be great if we gave him a bed that looked like a bed. Let's get him an Ikea doll bed. That's a great idea. And yet, Wabi says, haha, great idea. Girl, I stole it from Reddit. Someone had a photo of their cats on doll beds, and I thought, hey, that's great. I should do that. Maybe my cat wants his own duvet. And so I did. <laughs> because I'm a grand cat lady. And it's totally cute right now when I'm like, <laughs> when I look like this, but in like 50 years won't be as cute you'll just be the crazy cat lady who's just like oh yeah she her house is full of doll beds at <laughs> cats <laughs> head first only says i bet he'd pick the ikea box that came in first though because he's a cat no he actually went for the this bed i had originally bought for another cat but i then he he it was my cat who died and then i put the bed away but then when i got uh mr pickles um from the shelter you know, to sort of replace that cat. Um, I, at some point, I was like, I wonder if he'd like the doll bed. Because he wasn't really interested in any traditional cat beds. I made him a cardboard house. It's right back there. It's got colored tiled roof. A nice little colored tiled roof. Fake chimney. And a little scratcher box inside. I made that for him. Does he sit in it anymore? No. Mm -mm. Does he sit in the little pink bed that's round over to the, you know... To the left of that? No. But you know what he does sit in? The Ikea doll bed. And sometimes he goes underneath the doll bed. I am not joking. He actually like scuttles. Because he's not a tiny cat either. He's a kind of a chunker. And he, he just like flattens himself and goes underneath the doll bed. Like, what the fuck is he looking for underneath the doll bed? There's nothing underneath the doll bed. Why do you want to be underneath the doll bed? I don't know. Yet, here we are. <laughs> At first only says, my cats would even sit in those brown paper bags that Ikea had. Oh, man. Oh, brown paper bags. Array of Emotion says, cats love those brown paper bags. Cats love bags. Yeah, they do. I don't know what it is. I think they just like paper. Which is probably why it's like, I don't know. Cats always love sitting on the books that you're reading. Yeah. This is what I imagine. Anyway, tell me how you guys are doing. Because, like, I hope you guys are doing well. I have been busying myself, like always. I'm always, like, either working on music or working on something related to the music. How are you guys doing? Well, I hope. I hope everyone's happy, healthy, probably, like, you know, gonorrhea-free. <laughs> oh, shit, I'm an asshole. Sorry. Uh, so... Anyway, yeah. How was your last week? Please let me know if if you had a really good one. If you had a really bad one, let me know that. And that way I could feel superior and mock you. No, just kidding. I would never, never do that. Mm. Anyway. um, Yeah, it's been busy. Wabi says, I have been messing about in the uh, mastering stuff and wrote another non-it. Ah, oh, and recorded that you wrote a non-it. You did the non-it. Go girl. How are you? Which DA are you using, by the way, Wabi? Are you using Cakewalk? Head first only says, I've spent a happy hour playing with loading Peter Gabriel's VC files into the Arteria Fairlight emulation because I am a nerd. Yes. That's that's great. I didn't even like know you could do that. I didn't even that that was like available. But I do think you're a nerd and I I, I really like that about you. I I enjoy nerds this is look at this yeah i mean <laughs> nerd um wabi says cakewalk yes good i'm glad i hope i i don't know how long you've been using cakewalk but i hope uh you're enjoying it yeah i hope it's i mean it looked nice the interface it looked nice i mean like i years wabi says nah i i would 
totally use that except I have um a Mac. It's not going to happen. So I've got Ableton Live. It's fine. Gunner Zero Recall says, working mentally in a weird state. Nomads at the moment and damn gonorrhea. You went straight for the very bad stuff. New stream schedule seems to be going well, though. Yeah. Gunner Zero Recall, by the way, thank you for the shout out on Twitter. That was really sweet. Thanks. Thank you. Um, let's see. Yeah, I went for gonorrhea because I figure, like, that's not the worst case. The worst case is, like, you know, COVID-19. But I went for the gonorrhea because gonorrhea, at least you can cure that, you know? At least they've got meds for that, you know, like syphilis, meds for it, you know? Just saying. And you've got a new stream schedule. <laughs> AIDS, did we forget AIDS? Gunner's Air Recall says. No, we did not forget AIDS. But I figure, like, if we're going to talk about, like, the worst, I was going to say, like, COVID-19 maybe. But AIDS, yeah, that's definitely a big one. I'm not, I'm not, I'm terrible. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, Headfirst Only says, is it just me or is the latency in your stream way better this week? I don't know. I don't know. Is it? Um, I hope. I hope it is. Either way, I'm... I'll take it. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> um, seems to be. Hmm. Maybe it's something to do because I think I'm using a little bit more light, so maybe that's changing it a bit. I don't know. I I left the lamp on, like, kind of high because I was on a Zoom call and I didn't want to. I didn't want to be too like dungeon esque. It'll be like, who's that person? wearing cat ears and living in a dungeon and I'll be like yeah so yeah ah um gonna see a recall sets but yeah I got the new stream schedule okay you're gonna have to let us know when that stream schedule is why don't you type it out in the chat and I'll, I'll shout it out just in case um anyway um so this whole time that we've been um that I've been like for the last few weeks I've been doing uh, metropolis all right so I've been taking you back with scoring Oh, Headfirst only says, it's gone from over a minute to less than 10 seconds. So I think there's, it's something more in the tech. <gasps> Moo, maybe. I don't, look, I'll take it. I will take it. I do not care. Thank you. Hey, maybe this means we can play Jackbox games. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I haven't been able to like, you know, I, I don't take that puppy out very much because, uh, just been busy and, um, yeah, so maybe we can play Jackbox games later if it doesn't, you know. Anyway, um, what else? So yeah, I've been doing scoring. And then like, um, I found out like, like today there was going to be, um, play what? Wubby says, <gasps> do you not know what Jackbox games are? Shit. Okay. Jackbox. Blah, 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 blah. Can you talk? Oh my God. <laughs> Jackbox games, it's like, um, they're games that you can play. Like, I can Twitch stream these games with you. And we can play. And you guys, I already bought them. So it's not like you have to pay anything. I just go into the game. And, um, and then I, you guys get a code. And you can go play the game with me. And you can play on your phone, usually, or a tablet. And, um, yeah. And we can play games together. And I have two party packs. Because... I really, I really wanted something else in addition to doing like music and stuff. I wanted something on the side so that, um, so that I could, uh, yeah, um, so that I could have a break from all the crazy ass, uh, scoring because, uh, scoring takes a long ass time. I mean, I've been working my, I've been working really hard, really hard and, um, I've been skipping a fair amount of lunches and it's water. I don't know. It's bad. I'm doing the thing, the bad thing where I'm like not quite taking care of myself enough and not probably eating enough. Certainly not sleeping enough. The French doggy. Bonsoir, people. Bonsoir. Uh, Gunner's here recalls new stream schedule by the way it's thursdays 6 to 9 p.m friday 9 p.m to midnight 
Saturday, 1 p.m. to 9 p.m., all CST. So if you want to check out our friend Gunner Zero Recall, who is in this chat right now, Gunner Zero Recall is on Twitch. Thursday, 6 to 9 p.m., Friday, 9 p.m. to midnight, Saturday, 1 p.m. to 9 p.m., and it's all CST. It's that central standard. There you go. That's my shout out. All right. Jackbox Games, Wabi. Okay, if you've got time, we can play it a little bit. Yeah, like, yeah. So um, the Saturday schedule is doable for us Euro folks, Array of Emotion says. Ah, yes, it is. Usually, um... Usually when like people, when people in the US um, stream, like it's usually late. And so it's like sometime like 3 a.m., 4 a.m. here. And I can't tune in because I need to sleep. But um, now that you've got a, a schedule, you've given us a schedule that we can, we can do um, on Saturday. We can stop by. We'll hang out. We'll, uh, yeah, we'll like show up and tune in and like, you know, support our people because that's what we should do. Because we're all trying to, we're all trying to, uh, what? We're all trying to do our thing, right? You know? Nice. Um, Duff French Doki says, allergies are kicking in, so I have a sore throat. Oh, I'm so sorry because you got the post nasal drip thing, Duff French Doki. Yeah, I know what that is. I'm sorry. Ooh, what? allergy meds are you taking so if you're taking loratadine and it's not doing enough step it up i take rupitidine and it's the best all right it's also called brand name rupitol and yeah i have to take a slightly he serious more serious anti-allergy because i actually do i'm a little allergic to pet dander <laughs> which is weird because i've got like two cats so it's like oh you know what it'd be great yeah if i just I just uh, got two cats because uh, I'm allergic. Um, yeah, so, uh, hey, I get it. I hate, and I hate when that happens. Taking a pill every evening, Castigno, 10 milligrams, Duff French Dogie says. I have no idea for th what that is, but I'm going to assume it's, it's strong stuff because I don't know what it is because <laughs> I'm usually paying attention. <laughs> Array of Motion says, Boo for allergy meds. Mine only flare up during the spring. Array of Motions. Ah, uh, well, it's okay. Yeah, it's all right. Gunner Zero Recall says, I would be able to tune in on Saturday. Um, at first only. Yeah. Is it common? Oh, not it's common stuff, Da French Dogi says. Oh, so Castigno. I'm going to have to look it up. I'm going to look in med stuff. Yeah. Anyway, it's okay. Array of Emotion says, Oh, I didn't mean to type meds in there. It's okay. I think we know what you're saying. We get the gist, which is, Damn it. Damn allergies. Damn you. Double fingers. We hate you. <laughs> you suck. Yeah. All right. Anyway, uh, tonight, tonight I will, one, I will share some. Um, so what I did, I, I had a Zoom call before this, and I joined um, something called the Alliance for, um, for like women, like composers. And, uh, <laughs> cause I'm not really a composer now. I just, cause I want to get into it. I want to get into scoring. And so I joined, um, this, this group that was, um, it's all women and it's all women composers who are, who, and it's like, you know, it seems legit. And I'm just like happy for whatever, like situation where like I actually get to talk to people who are le who are like legit doing this as a job and like not me who is just dicking around at home um <laughs> and um so I was on I was just worried I'm like okay if anyone wants to see like some examples of what I've been doing shit I don't have anything to show because like a lot of my render videos are like um they're really long and so I was like okay I'll make some short clips right and so I decided to um so I spent like basically all day yesterday scrambling to make some clips and mastering and trying to make it sound somewhat okay and I worked on things and um I will play you um but you know the um 
um, the one that the section where she dances and she's all sexy and shit, um, the which I just call the yeah the Great Destroyer of Worlds. Um, I just figured I would uh, I would really mix it a lot better, master it, like just mess with things a bit more. And so I'm gonna play that for you. Um, and let me play that for you now. Hold up. Let me switch to display. Duff French Dogi says, Unfortunately for me, autumn and humidity are the worst. <sighs> yeah, I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm so sorry. I know what... Ugh. Hey, Belinda! Belinda says, hello, wall. I'm like, girl, what's up? I'm going to play for you the nicer, the nicer, more fixed -y version of, uh, yeah, the dance thingy, right? So let me switch to display. Okay. All right, let's see if this plays. Tear you apart Till there is no heart Dear 
Okay. Yeah. What did you think? Hey, Zenith Dark Sky. What's up? Hey, you finally caught me on. Yes, you did. Let me catch, catch up on this chat. Uh, sometimes when I when I'm watching stuff and I click over, like it, the window disappears, so I have to like remember to like be careful about that. Um, yeah, Wabi, this is your favorite bit. It's also my favorite bit. Okay, it's my favorite bit too. And um, I think it's just because it's like um. When I was making this, when I was making this, scoring this film, I thought, okay, at some point, I'm at the, at some point, there's going to be a moment where it's like this character of evil Maria, you know, of robot Maria, um, just basically drives men wild and seduces them. And I thought, hey, that would be a nice moment to stick in a sexy song, right? Because I'm like doing, I, I did a lot of instrumentals and I did a lot of, you know, sections with just orchestra stuff. And then I did a mix of like electronic and, and I did a lot of, you know, I did hip hop. I did like a little bit of metal and I did, I, I threw in a lot of different things. And I was like, you know what? I haven't done yet. I haven't given the full, like the full, like treatment, the one where it's like, I go all, I go full on with like the, the sexy voice and I do the like the little singy thing that I do. And then, and I get to do the, you know, the the production where it's like you could take this and it could be like a little single like on the side you know <laughs> arabian motion says all the genres yeah all the genres of course i do all the genres i have to because uh yeah i just have to do i have to do it because it's like it's a way to update it to, it's putting my own twist on this i wouldn't i i would be wasting my time if I made this and I didn't try to put my own twist on it and make it, you know, really very much, you know, very personal thing. And when people can finally listen and watch this, I am hoping that they understand how personal it is to me because I love this film so much. And I would I would be devastated if I didn't if I didn't do it, this, you know, the service that it deserved you know wabi says i love it thank you i i love this part a lot too or if emotions mentioned uh some of the sims seem to pop out more yeah i i did stuff um i i, I did stuff i worked on it <laughs> so i've been working on it and i've been trying to like put together like little clips that are decent enough to play for anybody who's like a you know that for to play for like professionals so they they kind of get an idea of what kind of i don't know composer i am but it's taking like a really long time because like it's not just like mixing a regular song oh head first only says a portfolio yes kind of yeah i guess i need to make that i gotta do so much shit <laughs> yeah i need to make something like that i don't i because i want like a real job at some point where it's like someone's like here i will give you the monies to make the music for this thing and there and 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 it's yeah and it's like how do i convince somebody to give me money to make a thing to trust me to do a good job and make it interesting and it's like well how about i just take a movie that's a silent film and i score it how about I just do that? And it was like, all right, well, which silent film do you like? I'm like, Metropolis. That's it. You know, I like the Voyage to the Moon, but I have found that um, the way Metropolis is cut is just like the way it's edited, the way it's shot. It's just like so good. And so I'm like, oh, I got to give it. Uh, a ray of emotion says it is a big project. Yeah. Yeah, it is a big project. I really, uh, <laughs> I think I bit off more than I can chew, or I'm just learning to chew a lot. I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm enjoying it so much, so much. But I also like for anyone who dis who wants to start scoring. Um, I would say pick something that you like. Pick something that you really, really, really like because that's the only way you're gonna stick with it because if i didn't love this movie so much i wouldn't 
I wouldn't stick with it, but I really, I really love that. <sighs> Wabi says, especially in these artistically unviable times. Yes. Yes. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's that time. It's, it's, I mean, we're all like trying to, to do, to do artistic things, to put something out there that's, that's good. And, and, and we're trying to get people to give us some money for it, you know, instead of doing it for exposure. And I don't know how many times, or if we're like, you know, just like some kind of shit like that, you know, I don't, I don't. I don't always want to be, you know, like I'm I'm a really nice person. I will do stuff for free for some people, of course, because I care about them and they're my friends. But at some point, I will I am trying to make some kind of money to be um to to I don't know. And I want to do I want to do good things. I want to do great things. I want to make great things. Things that are memorable, things that are individual and original and different and i figure if i score this film like i mean i'm sure a lot of people have scored this film lots and a lot of them like me like sitting at home and and just at this desk and skipping way too many lunches and way too much rot when like not getting enough water and i know i'm gonna take care of myself i swear to god i i think i've dropped some weight in the last couple weeks so it's cool it's cool we're, we're cool all right um yeah <laughs> i'm gonna try to not go crazy but yeah i mean we're all we're all trying to make what we make we're all trying to be artists in our own way head first only lobby you know like every every musician every artist everyone who's ever tried to make a living out of everyone who's even dreamt of it i mean how often are we told like, oh, it's for exposure or it's good, you know, it's good, you know, like, you know, it's like, come on, it's just, it's sad. And, and it's like, it's depressing. And I, this is one of the few things that I can do where I can like sit at home and not expose myself to like scary sickness stuff and i can do this at home which is great and it's like all right so if i had a chance to be able to do this at home for actual monies yes i would be like throw those coins my way you can trust me with your shit look i scored an entire film and nobody held a gun to my head i just did it for fun and to teach myself because i'm crazy yeah I'm going to catch up on this chat is blowing up, blowing up. Yeah. So basically, Head First Only says, if you're doing what you love, it never feels like work. Yeah. Belinda says, we need the money. We need the monies. We do need the monies. And yeah, just keep freaking going. Just got to do it anyway. Wabi says, I suppose. I love that. <laughs> yeah. Um, head first only says, I'll just settle for making things that people enjoy hearing or seeing. Money would be nice, though. Money is always a nice little thing because it makes you feel like your art has value, that you have value, that your efforts have not been in vain. And who doesn't need that little, like, boost of, of self-esteem? Shit, I know I do. We all do, right? We all need somebody to be like, hey. I will pay you because you are worth this. You are definitely worth some money. Like what you make is worth money. Damn it. I'm paying you. Paying you. God damn it. Um, let me catch up. <laughs> Zenith Dark Sky says, got to be able to make a living off of what you love. Definitely. We would love to. All these people. Wabi says, you got a new career now. Head first only. Oh, yeah. Voiceovers, right? Oh. Noirjar says, ah, the exposure bullshit. Yeah, I know. Tell me, right? At first only says, here in the UK, our chancellor has basically hung the arts out to dry. He suggested that folks in the creative industries got proper jobs. <gasps> he said that? I'm not surprised, but he's a little shit. Okay. I'm, I'm going to, so it says, what a, insert appropriate epithet here. 
What a motherfucking dirtbag. Dirtbag. <laughs> See, the dark guy says, Alan Watts once said, and after all, if you do really like what you're doing, it doesn't matter what it is. You can eventually turn, you could eventually become a master. It doesn't matter what it is. Turn, you could eventually become a master of it. It's the only way to become a master of something, to be really with it. And then you'll be able to get a good fee for whatever it is. I really hope that's true. I really do. Because I really, I also kill myself to do a lot of stuff. I just, I push really, really hard. Um, Wabi says, yep, help, hopefully the industry will come back more balanced. I hope so. Because that's a terrible thing to do to all those people who, who work in the arts industry and, and, you know, create things. And suddenly it's like no income. What is that? I mean, all those people who like relied on doing live shows, pff, nothing. And it's like, great. It's, it sucks. It's really, it's really sucky. Headfirst only says the UK creative industry generates over 5 million pounds a year. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Marja says, plus it is fun to do the ridiculous crap for no good reason. Yeah, I know. I would, I, yeah, exactly. Hedrosson says, I'm still waiting for that first voiceover call, Wobby. And yeah, I know. Ah. Uh, I, G Slade, what? What you doing here, G Slade? Everybody say hi. Everybody say hi. Um, I recently did um, an interview with G Slade. G Slade and I met on FOM um, and we collabed on FOM. I think we did. Yeah. And also it was like, yeah, that's how we met because we're because um, we're FOM pals. And um, yeah. And I, yeah. And I'm one of the I'm, I'm you know, I'm one of the people who like produce who really like to produce. So it's like, yeah, I'll produce. Yeah, I'll do stuff and we'll have fun. And and now he's like, hey. So we we did a um, we did a, a little interview and um for his podcast. So that will be coming out. Um, when's that coming out? When's it coming out? G Slade, G Slade. Zenith Dark Sky says, man, the creative industries everywhere make a fuck ton of money. So that's pretty dumb of someone to turn against that, especially since those are the things that define culture and society. I again, it's like people don't even think of that in in those terms. They think it's like something like frippery it's like something like you know it's like oh it's just extra shit we don't really need it but unfortunately i mean that's how a lot of people think and it's sad it's sad because it's like completely disregarding the value of of you know artistic creation and there's a lot to be thankful for there's i mean everybody everybody like i don't know i think someone who's like get a proper job and it's like this is a proper job are you gonna tell like Hans Zimmer that he doesn't have a proper job I mean come on and it's like we're all trying to do our best and for you to completely just be like disregard that it's just it's just lame okay okay G Slade says indeed got to get the episode edited and uploaded for Friday yeah so Friday at 6 a.m. U.S. Eastern Time. So that's going to be like, it's going to be up and I'm going to be like, um, I'm going to, I'm, I'm, he's going to play like an interview that he did with me. And, um, I'm, I'm pretty sure I said ridiculous shit or told you bad stories. So <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, Yeah. And made unfunny jokes. Okay. So G Slade's G Slade's podcast. Um, I want you to type that into the chat, okay? Uh, or no, no, you can't type in the URLs. Fuck. Okay. Well anyway, find him. He's he's on um Twitter, on Instagram, and um he's doing a podcast. I'll put I'll put a link up later, like on my social media. And that way you guys can all listen and find out what a complete and horrible weirdo I am and yeah <laughs> where is my self-esteem 
<laughs> um, anyway, a rave emotion says, you would think with all the time people were forced to spend indoors watching countless hours of TV or listening to music, they'd realize the value of art in, in entertainment. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, shit. If, if we didn't have Netflix, like, if we didn't have, like, this, this constant influx of entertainment, I bet we'd be, like, murdering bitches left and right. It would just be chaos. With that, you know, all the art stuff, all the beautiful music, all everything. It just keeps us, like, some relatively sane. And, yeah. Oh, Zenith Dark Sky says, All right, I got a scoot. It was good catching your stream. I hope your stream goes well. Gotta get to it. It was good talking with you all. I'll see you guys another day. Thank you for stopping by, Zenith Dark Sky. Cheers. Um, Headverse Only says, by the way, the, the podcast is 11 a.m. UK noon, which is like, yeah, UK. So UK and UK and then noon Europe. So noon on Friday, there should be a lovely podcast that goes up. I will send out links. I will show, I will give out stuff. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Okay. So anyway, um. And a French Doki says, without arts, we would become Zodiac clones. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. We'd just be like like the, the Zodiac killer. Just killing. Just out here killing. Here I go killing again. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Marsha says, the daily choice, kill bitches or art. Very important. Exactly, yeah. I. You know what? That's what they did in, in like Walking Dead. If they had just, you know try to create art and instead they're like we'll just kill people fine <laughs> if zombies were like just if they just channeled <laughs> channeled that into art <laughs> you wouldn't yeah then we wouldn't even have a series i haven't finished that series by the way so do not spoil it for me <laughs> first time catching your live stream um is there an introductory song or something? G Slade says. Um, yeah, there's like a little. I I play a little thing. Um, well, I play a little song for like the starting soon title page. Uh, you need to be entertained. Um, well, actually, I'm playing. I I've been playing like I played some clips, um, of scoring and like um. Yeah. Do you wanna um? Hold on. Here. Okay. Let's see if I did that right. I'm gonna um so yeah, I told you I made some clips. Um and um I'll play the one of the other clips for you. Hold on, let me just switch over to display. <laughs> Duff French Doggy says, but if someone wants to kill bitches or people so badly, just play GTA. Yeah, I know. Go.
so that was another clip. So I did all I did a couple of small clips, and I put them on my Google Drive thing, cause um just in case, I would need them today. But I didn't, and so now I'm just gonna like just try to do more stuff and and just try to like really polish it. But I also have Inktober stuff to do because yes, I'm doing Inktober. Norsha says I love how she shuts. That she shuts it down with a look. Yeah, I know, right? She's just like this, like, like, I don't know. I can't do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Headfirst only says, it's brilliantly done, particularly the two guys on the right who react like they've been hit. Yeah. Oh my God. They look like sad puppies. She'd like slap the shit out of them. She's like, bitch, get back. You better back up. You better back. Sorry. Okay. I was like driving one time in LA and I was like, it was like crazy ass traffic and this like transvestite was like super like mean and was like you better back up bitch better back up and i'm like god damn it's not my fault it's traffic i would back up but i can't god better back up bitch sorry sorry ah it's just having memories okay so i'm doing inktober um also why am i doing inktober G Slade is, I G Slade Slade says I'm having overthinktober. Yeah, it, welcome to the party, yo. <laughs> I feel that. Um, Wavi says I love your inktober. Yeah, uh, thank you. I'm trying. Um, so what I'm doing um for inktober. And yes, this stuff is related to music because um, I I was playing uh, musical files for you before, like um, from the musical I wrote. And if you don't remember, like I'll just give you a brief, like you know, reminder. It was um, the the collective, okay, and um, and it was all about like um, robot these AIs achieving sentience in space, but underneath that it was a it's like a story about how to form a, a real connection with somebody and also what it requires of you and all like and all of the questions that come along with it like you know what is individuality and and so i'm <laughs> when you're like making something like that it's not enough for me to release it, it's not enough for that. I need to, I need to make an, I, I was like, okay, I'm going to make an animatic. And you're like, what? Why? That's crazy, crazy bitch. And it's because um, I went to it before, before like the right, the start of COVID, I went to a Tenacious D concert. And basically, I think Jack Black, uh, Tenacious D and ja Jack, ba Jack Black, um, decided to he wrote a kind of rock opera and um and basically it's um oh god what was it called apocalypse something apocalypse i don't know it's it's on a sweatshirt i have a hoodie and it's got a robot on it and um basically tenacious d they play this rock opera and of course jack black singing the shit out of it and he's amazing and Along with it was like this sort of like animatic as well. It was kind of like an animatic. And um, it's just, it was great because it was like really apocalypto, a rave emotion says. Yes. Good job. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's called apocalypto. And um, basically it's like, it's all the, it, it's the rock opera, but it's performed um with this sort of screen that allows like projections and and though and and like you know he it, it was beautifully it was it was these were like the worst drawings ever they were shit and i'm pretty sure like he drew them himself and and colored them himself you know th that's why they were shit cuz i'm not i'm not expecting like top tier quality but there was something really great about it about kind of having this sort of rock opera uh, with a with a real story you know and and uh but also having this this lovely projection 
a visual visual aid to go with it. And it's not just a visual aid. It's more than that. It's a it's a way to like kind of give you a more immersive experience. And I and I really like the I really like that. I really like it when you go to a concert and it's not just somebody like like singing at you. You're almost in it and and they really make it immersive. And I like that. And I'm here for that. And if it's playing video files or something or a light, a special kind of light show thingy. um, Yeah, uh, whatever it is, it's like I'm here for it. And I figured, well, I wrote a musical. How about I draw an animatic? And it's like, yeah, <laughs> how about I just do that? Like Jack Black. Raven Motion says, Jack Black drew it all. Some other people scanned and colored it. Yeah. Um, so I don't have other people to do that for me. Um, it's it's me. So I'm drawing it and I'm color. I'm going to do all the shit. I'm doing all the shit. Of course I'm doing all the shit. Why do I do this to myself? <laughs> Just like torture. Um, I do all the things. Uh, did you know I can draw? If you didn't, no, nah, I, I can. Um, I actually, <laughs> fun fact, um, I do have a college degree, a, a university degree, and it's in animation. And I used to, I used to draw a lot. And I, I went through school and I have a, you know, I, I did that. And, um, but I worked so hard that it burned me out to the point where I kind of started hating it. And um, and I did an internship at a little studio um, in Hollywood. Um, and, you know, I wasn't, I didn't, it wasn't that I, by the end of it, I think I had to grind so hard that it was, it was difficult. And I couldn't, I just lost like my taste for it. And I was never as naturally good at drawing at, you know, as I was with um, music because like doing music um, is like so much it came to me very easily like I started making music when I was living in Korea and um, I had a, a lot more free time well I had some free time I was single so that means I had free time and um, and I I made music and that's what I did because I had to I needed to discover who I was and unfortunately like yeah it, sometimes you need to go to another country to do that <laughs> and I found that and I and I think that music that's like where I am like that's where my I'm the most talented at that I got I I'm the best at that naturally it, it just happens more naturally for me you know and this is also the drawing thing is also one of the things I do so um Hold up. Let me show you. Herp, 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 herp. Uh, chupa, 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 chupa. There you go. This is what I've been making. You're like, what? So it's just, um, it started out with some ideas about like what kind of characters I wanted. Um, cause there's the, there are the two, uh, two characters, um, the main characters. And their one's name is Zero, and the other name is um, Amelia. And um, basically, Zero is sort of like this assimilated being inside the collective. And the reason why, like, I put there's like a whole explanation about the the design and everything about of Zero. But um, this was just like an idea. And um, what I wanted to do was create a character. That was kind of like, you know, when covered up, looks kind, looks like a normal person, but like with all the, all the stuff off, looks like, you know, total alien, right? Yeah, cool. Um, and, um, not human, because I couldn't create a human for this character. It wasn't, it, it wasn't right. It wasn't part of that story. And what I also wanted to do was make sure that there were like, um, Post Apocalypto is on YouTube. Headfirst only says, "Yeah, Apocalypto was a weird Mel Gibson movie about Mayans." <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. That way, I didn't 
Uh, yeah, you don't have to watch the Mel Gibson thing. Um, so yeah, this is just me sketching, uh, sketching out ideas about what um, what kind of character I wanted. And so I had made um drawings before, but I wasn't really like happy with them. And so I wanted to draw something. You know, it's like, all right, well, what kinds of ideas? Um, <laughs> toy G Slade says, thank you. A rave emotion says, yeah, sorry, I forgot about the post part. Yeah, it's okay. Noirjai says, I am over Mel Gibson. Oh my god. I was over as soon as he said sugar tits, all right? And yelled about, uh, yelled weird anti-Semitic things. Yeah. I think everyone's over that. Yeah, like, he was cool. And then, then, then you found out he was an asshole. And then you're like, you're an asshole. I can't, I can't like you anymore. anymore. So anyway, the, the idea is that um, there's a kind of mechanical clothing that there's sort of like an armor that they that the simulated people have to wear, the simulated beings have to wear. And so when the idea is that when Zero escapes, Zero can rip off some of it, but not all of it. And so these the clamps that are sort of like holding in place, like it's gonna there's, you know, anything that's like here, it just gets ripped, you know, uh, Zero tries to rip it off. Same here, and this leaves scars as well. So, like, there's always, there's, like, a little, like, um, a da sort of a dashed line here around the head. And that is, um, that's, like, scarring. That's scarring from this little device here, the little, so when it, um, connects up here, there's scarring. And same thing on the arms, there's scarring. You'll see it in the next, the next, uh, zero photo, uh, zero drawing. And so this cover, this whole thing, this whole visor thing would cover the ears. And, um, and it's like, it's like a, it's sort of like my ears are covered, my eyes are covered. Sort of like I am deaf, I am blind. But suddenly this change kind of sort of stirs Zero's brain. And, and suddenly... Um, zero becomes sentient and so there's like a little tuft of hair here that starts growing because zero's thing comes off all right so the little um so this was covering the hair and so it can finally start to grow again um yeah <laughs> i really thought about this and so the reason why i and i'll just hold on let me like go to the here's the here's the the finished version of zero so the reason why I made it like this is because I wanted Zero to have like these right here, the little like da dashed sort of lines, they're, um, it's scarring. And these, these like the metallic, like the metal armor clothing, it's, you can't remove it. And the reason is that, um, Zero, like Zero's experience in the collective and while trying to escape as well is, um, it was pretty traumatic. And when you go through a traumatic experience, like with narcissists, with people who are trying to pressure you into changing yourself, who are trying to change who you are to, so that you stop listening to your own thoughts when you go through any traumatic experience you carry that with you forever you don't forget it stays with you and and it becomes a part of you so in this sense the reason why zero has scars and is because you know like some of these things they'll heal but they'll never go away and this metal, the metal armor, it, it, you know, it's like, it can't be removed unless you like, you know, can take something to cut it off. But again, it's carrying trauma with you. It's all about how we as individuals handle trauma and how it affects us permanently and how we carry it with us. So that's kind of the idea of, of this character. 
I know, I'm crazy. <laughs> okay. And first only says, I think we all are. Over Mel Gibson, by the way. But the internet meme, internet meme of drunk Mel Gibson on a horse will stay with me forever. I need to look that up now. I don't know that. Um, Marshall says, what's coo, but now crazy cuckoo bird. Yeah, he's a crazy cuckoo bird. Do not give him your phone number. <laughs> yeah. Head first only says, and he was wearing a Viking helmet. <laughs> it's the little details that are important. Oh, God, was he? Mel Gibson. You give Mel's a bad name. Come on. G Slate says, amazing how much backstory you have for it. Yeah. No, no, I do. I because it's it's this isn't this is a musical, but it's not like just about aliens or assimilated beings or hive minds or collective or AIs. It's not it is about that. And surface level, yes, it is about that. But underneath, it's about forming relationships with other people, with other beings. It's about finding yourself and and being able, like understanding that connecting with other human beings isn't losing who you are. Like that's not a healthy connection. It's, it's a lot of it is just like relationship stuff. Um, do I take a risk? Do I take a risk for happiness or do I not? Do I, do I break free from whatever system I'm in or do I, do I just stay in it? And it, it, because it's, it's safe because it's, it's understood. But like once you get a taste of freedom, once you get a taste of independence, letting that go is so difficult. And it's like, shit. I mean, that's what this musical is overall is about it's i mean yeah okay it's a musical and yeah aliens but underneath that all underneath that all there's more there's always more and i want there to be like you know i, I want there if for this to work well for you to to relate to the characters you have to find something <laughs> Wabi says, is everyone quiet? I crashed, now can't see any chat. I don't know. Maybe people are finding me dead boring and they're sleeping. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, to, uh, did I crash? Does anyone want to tell me if I crashed? I don't know. Maybe they're just quiet. So yeah, doing doing this, do, making a character. Oh, I first only says, I'm just enjoying the drawings. Okay, thanks. So yeah, that's that's what it is, though. It's it's creating characters that you can relate to that uh, you're listening. Thank you, Rave Motions. Thank you. Um, it's creating characters that you can relate to, even though they look different, even though they're like, you know, like zero is non-binary, you know, even though you're, you know, you might be identify as like a cisgender person like me i identify as a cisgender female yeah um but does that mean that you know but but i can still relate to this character even though this character is a non-binary alien it's like why not we all want the same things we all want to have good relationships with people to form connections with people to have real, to have interactions, to love. We all, all want these things. And and I think I could have just, I could have, you know, drawn any old crap, you know. Yach is not, G Slate says. I think I spelled that right. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. <laughs> is that a name for someone? So yeah, creating... A, a character that it's like I could have drawn up any old thing honestly I was thinking oh maybe I should just draw a generic robot maybe I should just not make it a person with any organic matter maybe I should just make it whatever but in, in the end like when I was thinking about doing this when I was starting to draw I thought you know what why don't I just make something that we can connect to <laughs> I identify as a dark void Noir says ah 
Yeah, but I mean, like, you know, I want people to be able to listen to this musical while watching this animatic and connect and understand. Practicing my Swedish, G. Slade says, Ah! Uh. I don't know what that means, though. Yach I don't know. I don't, I don't speak Swedish. <laughs> so, yeah, that's... And that's the that's the idea behind it, um, and that's zero. That's a character of zero. And um, um, let's see. Maybe I should. God, I wonder. Let me like open this. Cause like, yeah, it's. Yep, I'm so related to what you're saying around crush. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, I'm just gonna open a file. Because I should probably play it for you. So yeah, um, so yeah, that's that's the idea behind the character of Zero. It's uh, someone who is has gone through trauma, but is you know like the little bit of tuft of hair that begins to grow because it's no longer covered up, and the ears that can stick out because they're no longer pressed to their face it's the eyes that can see it's all of you know like the you know that that monkey thing with the like the um see no evil speak no evil hear no evil um this is like you know this character it's just um it was blinded and muffled and 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 clamped down and held down and suddenly it becomes free and this is what freedom looks like freedom oh my god Take it back for full circle, Mel Gibson. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So yeah, <laughs> G Slade says zero. What a cool concept. Thank you. All right. So that's zero. And this is these were the little, little beginning starter drawings of zero. Um. And then okay, I should share this stuff with him about. All right. So this is this is an idea. Okay. So the character of Amelia is. Amelia is an AI program, an emergency AI program inside um, Simpsons Hands 2. Head first only says, yeah, I gave I gave a uh, I gave zero four fingers plus webbed hands. Um, I gave Amelia five because Amelia goes is af you know, is modeled after Amelia Earhart, but like cartoony. So um, Amelia, the character of Amelia um, starts out as an AI emergency program inside a data module and i had a lot of ideas about the data modules and I've, I've drawn a few it looks like kind of looks like the spaceship from life force i don't know what that is but awesome it's okay it's this it's a the data module is kind of like this sort of if almost like you would um imagine two umbrellas stacked on top of each other with an engineering component at the top and um at the end um, a sort of a spear-like um, body with four thrusters, okay? There's, I, I thought about this a lot. And I was like, how would I create a data module that would be able to recharge itself, but, you know, but was somewhat able to like, you know, but was a little bit more streamlined, you know? So um, movie based on Colin Wilson's The Space Vampires. It's not good. Even Patrick Stewart couldn't save it. Head first only says, oh, cool. <laughs> it's probably really bad. <laughs> so Norsha says, I like the look of it. Yeah, I wanted to give it a kind of um, an or slightly organic, organic combined with mechanical. And the reason I did that was because um, the it's a data module, obviously, underneath it if you look at this this bit here it's all mechanical this is all um it's all hard hardware right here it's um spokes it's sort of like yeah it's like two two umbrellas sort of stacked but these these little bits here these are solar sails so they're able to like sort of absorb and convert the energy um so that this can sort of power the thrusters and keep sort of you know and push forward you know and maneuver a bit more but unfortunately it wasn't able to uh do it fast enough so the idea is that the um the the um data module and i gave it a name <laughs> because i really thought about this 
again. And I didn't do this before. When I was writing this this musical, I, I wasn't even thinking about names or anything, really. But now I started thinking about names. And so I decided to call the... the, the um, no, worse than vampire Vampirates. <gasps> vampirates, Norsha says. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Um, so when deciding this, I thought... All right. Well, what would be the situation in which Earth would send out a data module where it was like the last thing? And I was like, okay, how about it would be like different countries on Earth? Let's call them the Earth Alliance. And let's call this the Earth Alliance, an Earth Alliance data module. And this is like the the data module they sent out. And it's called X724. And I pulled that number out of my ass <laughs> but then I found out later that it was Amelia Earhart's birthday and um, a, a 724, like um, July 24th. So I thought, oh, well, that's rather fitting and that's perfect. So I'll just sort of write that into the musical. So it's just pulling it out of my ass, but it worked. So it X724, it's X, X is experimental. So this is, again, this is an experimental thing that they sent out in space. And why? It's because it's, it was the, um, it was a, the, the last thing that they could do to preserve any kind of anything from Earth. Because Earth uh, gets destroyed. Earth is destroyed. And yeah. Um, so I made a flag. <laughs> because I'm insane. So I made a flag. I'm like, how about I make an Earth Alliance flag? And it's two six-pointed stars, which mimic the two solar sails here stacked on top of each other. So there's one larger six-pointed star and then a smaller six-pointed star. And the dot in the middle is the is the engineering section. It's a sort of engineering um, kind of little capsule that is pushed it's it's out on the end and that's where you access they see these hatches here that's where you can access the um most of the stuff there i'm gonna i'm i gotta catch up on this chat How, okay the the by the way the whole crappy movie that head first only talked about he said it's basically discovered on board a spaceship hiding in Haley's comet that is garbage oh Headfirst only says the main vampire is played by Matilda May, who spends the entire movie stark naked. So I watched it a few times back in the day. Lol, of course. Is it the fast times at Ridgemont High slow, slow mo Phoebe Cates moment where it's like the video is all messed up? It's like, rewind it. <laughs> um, Headfirst only says, do you guys remember Frank Finley? He was in The Piano, The Three Musketeers. Chewing the scenery doesn't begin to describe his performance here. Pianist, not piano. The pianist. Ah, <gasps> that was yeah. Adrian Brody, Adrian, whatever his name is, Brody or whatever. He was a cool guy with the nose. Cool guy with the nose, right? I'm gonna have to think about this. That's the one. Cool guy with the nose. Anyway, yeah. So that's the idea behind data module X, uh, Earth Alliance data module X seven two four. Okay. So inside this little thing, this little like capsule is a character, is the AI of Amelia. And um, so the whole idea behind Amelia was that, all right, I'm going to make Amelia a kind of, uh, Amelia will have, is an AI. And so what you see in the beginning um, is just the data module, but there's like a light at the end here. There's a, there's a whole light thing at the end. Hold up. Yeah. There's a light at the end right here that kind of blinks. And so when when uh when Amelia is first singing her her first song, the light blinks every time her like voice goes on and it's like it's like is there anyone out there can you even hear me? I know it's a long shot but I've got to try. So the light blinks, you know? And so I was like, "All right, let's make the light blink." And these were some ideas I had. I was like, okay, well, later on in the fourth song, um, Amelia is like, um, Amelia, shoot, 
well, basically, the reason why she cho- goes by that name um, is is because she looks through the data in the data module and accesses it. And it's like, there was a pilot, you know, there was this pilot who was also lost. And, you know, this is great. It's like, I I totally get this. And and this pilot had a birthday on July 24th. I'm named, I'm, I'm part of data module X724. It's like, this is like, I, I feel a connection with this. You know, it's like you were lost. I'm lost now. I need help. You probably, you needed help too. And it's like, it's okay. And so she connects with this character and it's like, okay, I'm going to connect with this character and, um, and I'm going to adopt her name. And, and in that, then she adopts, um, a mental projection. Cause I can't just keep showing that little ship all the time during her songs. I have to show a transition into, um, into um like a personality and into like a sense of self and this is it and so i don't know i'm just this is me screwing around trying to figure out like how like how do i make it enough amelia Earhart but not too much and so um in the end i went with i kind of started drawing this and i might change it around because it's like i because basically I have to make sure that this and that are similar styles so that when they're matched together, um, that they look right. So at the end, and it's only at the end of the, you know, during merge where they'll, uh, they'll finally be able to see each other at the end of merge the, um, it's it's like they'll they get to sort of meet in a way and my in my brain i imagine these two characters meeting on a beach kind of like you know in shawshank redemption at the end where you know like morgan freeman's character red goes to say want and is like hey i'm gonna go to like say and and i'm gonna visit andy and he's like, you know what, he's, he comes along the beach and he's like, is the, he says, a uh, line in the movie, he says, is the Pacific as blue as it is in my dreams? And in the song, um, Merge, at the end of the song, it's, um, it's, that's what uh, uh, Zero says is, the oceans, they're so blue. They're so blue. And so what I imagine is these characters sort of meeting on a beach and looking out into the ocean. Because <laughs> I really want them to be happy. And I'm so dumb. <laughs> Wabi, thanks for the, uh, yeah. Wabi, thanks for the um compliments. Nice and dynamic. That looks so good. Yeah, thanks. Um, it could be better. I need to work on it. Array of Emotion says, was that reference intentional then? Which one? The blue? The ocean one? Or what? which reference are we talking about here? Um, the, the blue, ocean blue thing? No. Um, it was just a thought that ended up turning into a, something magical. It was, it's serendipitous. I always have these very, I have these very serendipitous moments where it's like an accident. It's just like, oh, it was an accident. And it just sort of happened this way. And I wanted to figure out a way to talk about Earth, you know, like, you know, at, at the end of Merge. Okay, hold on. You know what? I'm going to fucking, let me get Merge out instead. Because this is a, this is a big deal to me. Uh, you wonderful mastering. Uh, cast gravity where are you merge okay <sighs> um because red talks about hoping the ocean is as blue as he imagines it in his dreams i thought about it but i wasn't i i only remembered that line later after i had written this and then it was like oh well that worked out <laughs> but um 
um noir jar says everything involves nothing makes starts as it ends yeah nothing starts as it ends it's it's everything is about evolution not just an evolution of self but an evolution of like relationships everything it becomes it, it just changes nothing i i make starts as it ends okay there that's better yeah that makes more sense now <laughs> that sentence um yeah so this whole idea of having um of like the character i'm going to i'm sorry i'm loading it up it's taking it's a slow ass process and i'm really sorry but um i'll play it for you there you cannot spell today apparently noir Shire says i'm sorry but uh, it's opening i'm going to play this for you that way you guys can like actually hear it and it's it makes what i'm talking about makes sense cuz I feel like I'm just sort of rambling, but yeah. Okay. Hopefully. Zero. Where am I? You're inside my pod's computer, Amelia. I feel different. I have merged completely with my data. They're my memories. I know what it's like to live on Earth now. It's so lovely. And I wish that you could see it too. It's like heaven. It's the heaven. So um yeah so that was merge and um and you know how like zero says the oceans they're so blue they're so blue <laughs> at first only swipes tear from my eye <laughs> oh my god i cried when i first made this song cuz i was just so so happy 
I was just so happy. God damn it. Ah. <sighs> oh my god. Okay. All right. So that's when like these two characters meet on the beach. And it's like the ocean. So Zero says the oceans, they're so blue. Because remember, Zero uh, comes from an alien culture and has been assimilated for like, a, I guess, a while. And, um, and of course, Amelia has already dug into that, the whole like, earth data and is like i'm so into this and and so um and there's a song also before this um where zero's like tell me about earth you know tell me it's it's called um it could be wonderful and it's all like you know tell me all about this earth you know and and it's you know and amelia's like it looks like a big blue marble and it's like oh and and it's so zero has never heard of this earth and has never seen it. And Amelia is, um, you know, has started to dig into the, the data module and, and sift through the data. And so Amelia learns about this wonderful place called Earth. And so Zero's like, you know, you know, I want to go to this. I want to be here with you. You know, like it would be great to just we can travel. You know, we can we can see Earth together. And um, and Amelia has this dream of them like going to Earth and being able to like stay by the sea, you know, and, and has this whole beautiful dream about what the future would be, you know, and, and it's called um part of something more. And at the end, I want them to meet on, on the beach because Zero says the oceans they're so blue. And I imagine like Amelia coming out of like, the, you know, has like the bright sunlight and Amelia comes through and you see, like, f first it's like super like silhouette -y, and then it's like it's her and it's like, yay. And they finally meet each other in like the earth pro mental projection in on a beach in front of a beautiful ocean. I really, I, yeah, I really like this. I, these ideas, sorry. I'm crazy, and this is what crazy fucking people do, okay? They think of backstories of uh, for, like, a musical. So this is, I know it's like, again, I know this is just, this is a musical. It's something I can just release. But I think it's so much better if if we have, like, a visual aid or some something that sort of engages you more and, and keeps you, you know, keeps you really interested in the evolution of these characters. Um, let's see, another drawing I did. The Collective. Okay. So, talking about The Collective. The Collective is basically, like, it's the hive mind, right? It's, it's, the Collective is the hive mind. And I, I'm going to draw, like, a scene with, like, lots of big, you know, like, where it's just endless, like, a sea, endless sea of, like, assimilated beings. But, um... I wanted a representation of the collective itself. So I decided, well, how about I do a, just a screen where it's sort of like where the screen has like a face, but, you know, is no no nose, where the screen is just eyes and a mouth and like these eyebrows. And there's like a kind of a grid sort of texture, maybe. And so like the Borg, Norsha says, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like the board. But instead, like the 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 representative face of the collective will be a screen. Will just be this this face uh, on a screen, you know, disembodied. Because I don't know, I thought that would be scary. And and also it's really it's a lot easier. <laughs> Not easier to draw <laughs> than doing like these all like 20,000 characters. <laughs> So that's why I did it like that. So I just sketched out some ideas. I'm not sure which one to use yet. I'm still thinking about it. Um, I'm not really sure what to do. Uh, yeah, but I'll, I don't know. I'll probably do it like this one, but maybe like this one, but like inverted. So I, I it's just, I'm, you know, I just wanted something to, to crank. Yeah, I know. G Slate says, Krang, yeah, it totally reminds me of Krang. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, there. Um, yeah, but something like along this uh, along this line, Raven Motion says, the one bottom right is pretty creepy. This one with the teeth, with the pointy teeth, that one is 
kind of creepy. <laughs> First only says, I was thinking that too. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. So again, a, a sort of disembodied face that doesn't have all the anatomy. And that to me is, it's frightening because, uh, it's this sort of, it's not a person talking at you. It's, it's a hive mind. And that's, you know, and, and when you have a screen, you can make it massive and it could feel overpowering and big and frightening. And I would like, I was like, oh, I should make it something like that. Yeah. So, um, that's the, uh, <laughs> Edward Stanley says, or possibly something out of one of Devin Townsend's videos. Yeah. Huh. Probably. Also, thanks for the little, like, you know, thanks. I didn't think I was that good, but okay. <laughs> so yeah, that's the idea behind that, um, behind the animatic. So I'm one day behind on in Inktober. I got to make up for it, but it's okay. Because as long as, oh my God, Kenny. Shit, did I pick my cat? Oh, hey, buddy. Oh, shit. I, 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 he touched my foot and I freaked out a little. Hey, buddy. Okay. Anyway, yeah. So the idea behind the animatic is that I just make these beaut this sort of, uh, yeah, something to watch, and um, to while you're listening, and something that kind of like a movie, but not as expensive. <laughs> but it'll still be a lot of work, and I'm really trying. Okay. Um. Let's see. It's ten forty. What else will I? What there's? What else was I gonna do? <sighs> All right. Um, so yeah, the idea behind that. So I'm just going to keep working on, um, I'm just going to keep working on that stuff. And says, I would find it funny though. I love machines. I may have issues, honey. We all have issues. All of us. That's, that's what it means to be a person. We have issues. And my cat is scratching the thing. So come on. Hi, buddy. He's sitting on his stupid fish. I'm going to switch to, like, full camera. Can you see the cat? He's on his fish. He's on a cardboard fish right now. And he's looking at his house. Maybe he's going to go inside the house. Maybe he'll use that fake chimney. Build a little fake fire. No, it's not going to happen, I know. Hey, buddy. Hi. Hi, buddy. Oh, he's blinking. He's blinking at you guys. That means he likes you. Okay. Just continue sitting and tearing that shit up so I can buy you another one. <sighs> okay. Um, so one last thing I wanted to show you. Um, does, it has nothing to do with the musical or with, um, Head First Only says, and he's, and from his ears, he totally knows you're talking about him behind his back. Oh God. Yeah. You know, shit, it's, a, it's like, amazing. Why are, they're like little furry spies <laughs> with tails and whiskers. I love them so much. Okay, I know my fate when I'm much older is to be, like, a really crazy cat lady with, like, 20 cats and, like, several long pink cardigan sweaters. And I only wear slippers and I give them weddings and I make them outfits. Yeah, I'm going to be that girl. <laughs> anyway, um, so one, one thing I wanted to share with you, um, because I don't know how much I'm going to share with, like, how... I wanted to share at least, like, one production thing with you. So I decided to, um, to share something that I made last year. What do you mean when you're much older, Array of Emotion says? I mean when I'm much older. I mean when I'm much older... And cat? Holy shit, what happened? Okay. I heard a thump. I think he messed with his fish. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, when I'm much older, but I'm already there, aren't I? <gasps> Norcia says, I always tell people I am a dog person, even though I act like a cat. Maybe you're like, it's okay to be a dog person and to act like a cat. Maybe you just. You're just more like a cat, but you know, you know, like, okay, like the, 
like the Star Trek TNG, the episode where Will Riker meets his like his little copy clone thing. And he's like, he totally hates him because they hate each other because they look at each other and they see all the things they don't like about each other. Like, like, hey, you shouldn't have given up on Deanna Troy. And it's like, hey, where are your balls? Hey, like, you know, like, um, so I think that we maybe we don't like what we are, you know, maybe we're we're attracted to the opposite thing. Maybe it's like that. Maybe you can you can be a dog person, but be like a cat. But you appreciate the qualities of a dog because you find certain qualities in that dog um, appealing because you don't have them. You know, like I really love patient people. I love patient people. Why? Because I'm not patient. All right. I also like people who are calm and not crazy. Why? Because I'm really, really crazy. <laughs> Anyway, um, so I did want to share, because I, I said I would, I, I'm always trying to share music stuff with you. Um, last year, I I started participating in something called um, VPC, and um, it's the Vocalist Producer Challenge. And um, my team did not win, but I wanted to kind of show you some of the production stuff that I did because um, I think it's kind of interesting, but I don't know if it'll play through for you. I hope it does. It's kind of weird. It, it's like I have a lot of layers. This track, and I'm not joking about how many layers it has. It's got 68 layers and 68 layers of, uh, of you know, there are 68 layers to this. And it doesn't sound like 68, but it is because um, I do a lot of fun stuff with panning. And I wanted to show you some, some music stuff still, because I, I didn't score anything new for Metropolis. I've been busy with Inktober and I'm trying to sort of take a break from Metropolis and like let my, my music brain rest for a bit, but I'll still show you some production stuff. So I'm going to play this for you. You might like it. I don't know. I hope it plays through for you. If it doesn't, I'm really sorry. I'll stop it. Okay. <laughs> Hoshar says, uh, we love you for your crazy. That's, that's good. I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Jisoo says, Clone Riker was cool. Like an onion. Feeling better? You alright? You warm enough? Yeah. I don't know. Come feel my balls and tell me. Tell me. Tell me. Tell me. Guess who's back in the motherfucking house with a lean on my pay from the hospital? No doubt wasn't enough just to take the tumor. They make new holes, what's the bills to do? Yeah, in and out of my grave, I get incredibly deep. Nightmares about this is too brutal to speak. A man sees my ball, now I see him in my sleep. Easily my biggest L in this loop. The street and I don't know what you're thinking, but did you die? And I suppose that's fair. I was at work the next night, two or three weeks later, getting felt up from TSA agents flying out on Delta to do shows across the country, flying out the south. People hear the weird shit coming out my mouth. Guess it's later than you think, or so they say. Headed back home to the place where I know I'll get laid. No skins in a year, guess I'll die. No insurance on file, guess I'll die. Cancer in my ball, guess I'll die. Laying off the sauce, guess I'll die. Drug test coming up, guess I'll die. No rest fucking up, guess I'll die. Fuck, guess I'll die. Jesus damn it, fuck it, guess I'll die. Falling out of control, ungodly level. All Hallows Eve, more spooky than heavy metal. They can make you uncomfortable like Billy Corgan. When they roll in the spot, they twiddle with your organs. Seen getting bloodier than Lizzie Borden. Or some run in the theater, went and scuffed your Jordans. Got trapped into some shit your mom was hoarding. Put off the appointment, why there was something worse than. You knew that the ball was already oh. swollen, and you waited yeah, six I mean, months when it hurt to hold. No, you don't understand. I was lacking insurance. Though objectively, no, there's no great test of endurance. If you feel something fucked up in your fucking pants, obviously don't roll the dice to fucking take a chance. I lost the ball, but my life is intact, and I fuck better than your man. That's a fact. No skins in a year. Guess I'll die. No insurance on file. Guess I'll die. Cancer in my ball. Guess I'll die. Laying off the sauce. Guess I'll die. Drug test coming up. Guess I'll die. No rest. Fucking up. Guess I'll die. Fuck. Guess I'll die. Jesus damn it. Fucking guess I'll die. Ciao. Nobody cares.
killed you. You were already dead. You didn't have a pulse. Oh, you never do blow before? Sometimes your heart stop, start up again. Read a book. Look, I'm sorry, we're just having a bad day. Oh, you're having a bad day? Did you die? I got shot. But did you die? But did you die? But did you die? An estimated 9,560 people in the United States will be diagnosed with testicular cancer this year. One out of every 250 people with testicles will get testicular cancer in their lifetime. The average age of diagnosis is 33. Mine was around 36. 410 people will die from the disease this year. But did you die? 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 die, die. Most people who die from the disease die because they waited to go to the doctor and the disease had a chance to progress to a point that it was no longer treatable through radiation, chemotherapy, or surgery. So heed my fucking words, stupid ass. Go to the fucking doctor or something weird's going on with your nuts. Otherwise, you're gonna wait too long, it's gonna fucking kill you. It's gonna hurt the whole fucking time you're dying. But did you die? I, I did not die. So far. Okay, um, that was uh, called uh, Guess I'll Die. Um, sorry, about the buffering, I don't know. I, it's probably my computer. It's like, uh, 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 I can't. Uh, I'm dying. <laughs> Wabi says, I have to play you something. <gasps> okay, cool. Send me a link. Send me a link on, um, yeah. It's them 60-something layers, a rave emotion says. Yeah. Um, one, two, three, four, five, 68. 68. Uh, it's 68 layers. And, like, it's a lot. And I, I know it's a lot. <laughs> but um, when you make a song with a lot of panning, you need to do a lot of layers. And um, this this track was uh, made. <laughs> it's great. Wabi says, thank you. Um Thanks. I hope you liked that. It was, um, yeah, it was something that I made with um, my partner, Michael Kill, uh, for VPC. And um, we had to, uh, we had to do um, something about a meme. Like it was, the challenge was a meme. And, um, and um, my my partner was like, hey, how about we do Guess I'll Die? And I'm like, how about we combine memes? Because I love the meme where it's like Chow from The Hangover. He's like, but did you die? You know, he's like, yeah, that was sad. But did you die? And it's all about like how we tend to like, um, we have, like, you know, like the mi what I like to call the misery competition. The misery competition is when you share stories with like your friends or something and you talk about like how bad it is but then it's like the person who like probably who dies or who had the worst is like but did this happen mm, but did you die and so this character chow in in the um <coughs> in in the movie is like talking about how he well he he died for a little bit because his heart stopped because he did way too much blow. Um, but also, um, he was in a fridge. And his um, he was shivering and, and really, you know, like he, was, he died for a little bit. But he's like, yeah, that's nice. So it's like, but did you die? And it's like, it's it's so extreme. It's such an extreme kind of comparison. It's like, well, you can trump any but anything with that. Like, but did you die? It's like, yeah, I got shot. It's like, but did you die? And so my partner in this uh, competition, um, Michael, um, bought, battled uh, testicular cancer. So he actually lost a ball for like legit. And the reason why we, you know, we did this song and it's kind of like part, you know, it's it's a meme thing, but it's all it's also a kind of, you know, public service announcement um, for like health for testicular cancer and and uh yeah it's yeah because <laughs> yeah so i so it's like um what i do a lot is i um and this is where i first sort of i really started i really started messing around with samples um and um like so what I like to do is think of something 
like I like to take a sample and I like to really flip the shit out of it. And and so I did. And so I took this sample and then um hold on. Let me let me see if I can give you like the original. It is pulling all from your vid that has gone freezy. Oh no. Oh, okay. Is it working? No. Ah oh, shit. I'm so sorry. I'm so so sorry. Is there anything I think it's is it my it's my program, isn't it? It's like uh, I hate you. All right. I'm sorry. I'm so so sorry. I don't mean it to be freezy. Maybe I think it's this this thing. Is it this program? It's totally this program. It's like killing you, isn't it? Okay. Um let me see if I can play this this whole this whole thing this um audio clip for you because hold on let me see if i can get the original so i do this thing where i take an audio clip and um i'm going to take it and i'm just going to pull it out all right that's all it is okay here so I'm just going to play this one audio clip. This is what the original audio clip sounds like. Uh. Okay. Click the turbo button. What? What turbo button? Is there a turbo button? Oh, what are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. We can still hear you fine. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm so sorry. I don't know what happened. I think it's, it might be this, this, uh, I think it's this, honestly. It's, it's, it's Ableton Live. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to show you this one thing. Uh, what I do with samples. Audio is good, though. Oh, shit. I'm so sorry. I wanted to still, hold on. What if I switch, if I'm going to switch back to full camera and see if it'll, like, kind of, then switch back to display. Maybe it'll do something. Okay. I hope it's not too bad, but it might be. Yeah, it's kind of laggy. I can see it. Damn it. Okay, let's just back to display. Let's see? All right. Yeah, no, it's laggy. I can tell. I can tell it's laggy. I'm sorry. Turbo fixes everything. I don't know what ter turbo is. You're going to have to, like, tell me what that is later. Okay, so I take, I usually take, um, I think that was a Knight Rider reference. Oh, okay. Do, 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 do. Yeah, Michael Knight. I think I have a Knight Rider t-shirt. That's how lame I am. And probably secretly German. Okay, so here's, here's this, this sample. I was like, okay, how would I take this? And I, I flip it and I turn it into something else. Because I, I wanted to make something that sounded really cool. But, um, but also like different and a little bit higher pitch so I could pair it with like a low bass here. Lagalicious shit, man. Okay, let me play this one thing for you and then I'll just close this program because it's being a dick. Hold on. Okay, you know what? Fuck it. Ableton Live, sorry, I'm closing you. You're being, no, don't save. I'm closing you. <laughs> Never hassle the half. Don't hassle the half. Or as I like to say, uh, don't, like, um, yeah. Don't harass the Harris, Chris. <laughs> don't harass the Harris. All right. So is it, is, is it less laggy now? Is it not, is it still lagging or is it, are we, are we having issues? Maybe it was just like, I seriously think it was that file. That file is massive. <coughs> and that, that file just sucks up juice. It's like, oh, thank you for taking out all the life. Like, oh, so, um, I'm really sorry about that. But, um, let's see. Let me know if I'm still laggy because I, if, if I am still laggy, then um fits with your ball song yeah i love sorry right, i i think balls are funny i don't i've got balls that they're ovaries so there you go 
Yeah. I don't know. I don't know why it's being so slow now. No lag, all fine. Okay, so it's straightened up. It is the file. <gasps> Damn it. Okay. All right. I'm so sorry about that, you guys. Fixed. All right. Yeah, it's definitely like, it's my computer. Because my computer's like, <laughs> I hate you. All right. If I, I'm going to try out, here's what I'm going to try. I'm going to try to turbo fix. <laughs> I, everything's fixed by turbo. Um, I'm going to try opening like Jackbox games and seeing if this works. Because I just want to try it out because I want to see how much juice it takes for this. And um, and if it if it's really, really, really laggy, um, then um, then I'll at least I'll have like a better idea of um, what I've got, basically, like how how bad it is. All right. I'm just going to launch this. OK, let's see if this works. Norja says, I'll have to I'll have to tell you the ball sweat story sometime. <laughs> okay. Ball sweat story. Give it a go later. You'll have to tell me it sometime. Okay. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to like um let's see. Split the room. Okay. I'm gonna see if this works. Edwards only says, I'll send you a message. Let me know when you get it. Let's see. Yeah. Did I feel my phone buzz? Do, 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 do. Hold on. Say, so does. Come on. Is it sending it? I don't know. Okay. Just let me know. I want to see if this works properly. Yeah, I don't know. Go. Okay. Gotta hit the road. Enjoyed the show. I'll be finishing up your episode tonight. Thanks, G Slade. Have a nice night or day. Oh, I don't know. Rave Emotion says that was like several minutes for me. Adios. Okay. All right. And that means I don't. Yeah. Okay. So here's the ish. If I want to play a game with you, um, usually you have to like be um. You have to play via phone. Um, and you can listen to my stream and everything. But if you play via phone, you'll be more real time. If you listen to my stream, it'll lag. And so that's the problem. But if you want to try playing something, then, um, then we can. Um, so I'm going to see, like... If you do you wanna do you guys wanna attempt trying to play or is it too laggy still? Am I still laggy? If I'm super laggy, then I need to like figure out what's wrong and then I need to like shut shit down. Cause like, I don't know. Okay. Okay. So yeah. I'm still, yeah, I guess I am still laggy. Okay. Shit. Okay. I'm just gonna quit this part then. Okay. Yeah. I think it's just my computer is being laggy as, as shit. And um, we can only hear you about a minute later. <gasps> That's so shit. Okay. All right. So at least I know what, what's up. All right. So, I can't do Jackbox. I'm still quite laggy. Ugh, fuck. This is so bad. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, I guess I can't play the games with you. Um, 
and I can't like it's just the inner internet being sucky because everyone's at home head first only says oh, yeah I'm sorry I'm so sorry well it's like look it's it's 11 right now do you I I mean I have I can show you I I want to show you stuff but it's like it's being like yeah it's it's just delayed as shit a rave emotion says I think the ball song caused the stream to be super delayed yeah it's it's really laggy and I think I'm going to have to, like, I'm going to probably have to stop. Um, and I'm really sorry. To end the stream. It's really bad. Okay, so um, I'm going to end the stream then. Because uh, it's laggy, and I'm really sorry. But, um, yeah, I guess Ableton Live, that, that the ball song really uh, <laughs> really crushed my computer. And with balls. Um, I think the other stuff was fine. Merge was fine. But uh, this one, it was just like... It's because it's huge. It's really big, and there's a lot of panning. There's a lot of samples and everything like that. So, it's like, hmm. But, it's okay. I'll just I'll just have to end the stream and I'll have to figure out a way to um I'll have to figure out a way um yeah head first only says yeah your typing showed up about a minute before I saw you type it yeah this is this is bad I don't know it's never it's not been this bad like it's just pretty bad right now so I'm very 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 sorry I think it's it's just cuz it's yeah it's I don't know. I'm sorry. But um, it's okay. We'll just call it an early night. Usually I go for like three hours, two and a half hours. It's okay. It's okay. I'll have some more stuff to show you, some more Inktober stuff to show you. I'll have, pro I'll probably play some more um, stuff for you late, like next week. But um, I will work really, really hard and I will... Uh, I will do my best to give you something to look at next time round and maybe talk more about um, music and how like the Inktober stuff is going. And um, oh yeah, one more, one more little peek at my Halloween decorations. I love decorations. Yeah, look, it's a cat and it's a ghost and it's a pumpkin. This is how I roll with Halloween decorations. And yeah, you know I'm going to be dressing up as Lilu Dallas Multipass. <laughs> it's okay. Don't worry about it. We'll just figure it out next week. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. Um, you guys are so nice. Oh my god, I'm going to break things. Um, you guys are so nice. I'm sorry about this. It's just like, it's choke time. Oh, by the way, I made a word for that before. I made it up a million years ago. It's called load choke. Load choke is when something is like, again, loading or trying to get through a process, but it chokes the system. And so literally it looks and sounds like it's something's choking. So it's called a load choke. And I made it up and feel free to use it. <laughs> um, thank you so much for for hanging out and um yeah and remember we're we're like wear a fucking mask you know wear a mask try not to be a dick and uh remember that i love you i love you i love you oh. yeah yeah i think that's that'll that'll do that'll do